Hi guys, welcome back to Lucas 3D Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make little things using Bamboo Labs own little thing generator, make my little thing. I'm also going to do some tests and print them using different settings and parameters, and hopefully we can find out which settings are the best to print them. So you can get two different LED ports. This is the older version and this one is the newest. The newest one is modular so you can make little things of different sizes. I already got the older model so I bought the newer two pieces LED kit since it's almost the same size as the older one so we can compare them. But of course you can get the four pieces kit if you want to make bigger little things. So let's see what you'll get when you buy the kit. You'll get LED ports, a power connection cable and a USB cable with an on and off switch that connects to this connection cable. Now we have to install this in a frame which we will need to print but let's get back to that later. Let's first start with printing a mono letter fan, which is basically a letter fan printed using only one color. Now you can print this in any color you want, but the most conventional way to do it is to print it with a white filament. So let's now head over to Maker World, then go to Maker Lab and look for the tool Make My Letter Fan. Let's create a new project. I'm going to print mono letter fan for my new LED kit first, so let's choose this one. Click this button and I'm going to use this picture here which has quite nice details. Since I have two LED ports, I'm going to pick this option and it will automatically resize the picture so it fits the frame. You can rescale the picture, move it around and if you go to the image tab, there's a lot of other options here and you can play around with the settings until you're happy with how it looks. If you want it to be as close as the original, I wouldn't change anything here. Then let's hit download. I'm going to use my A1 mini to print it and I'm going to use both 0.2mm nozzle and 0.4mm nozzle. Now you can download the frame separately here, but you don't really need to do that since the frame will be included in this little thing file anyway. So let's download this one for the 0.2mm nozzle. Then let's generate another little thing for the 0.4mm nozzle. Open the file in Bamboo Studio and you can see that there's a little thing that's positioned like that instead of just laying flat on the plate. You actually want to print monolithic things in this orientation since you'll get little things with better resolution. You can also see that there's this scaffolding to keep the little thing in place. Before we print the little things, let's print the frame first. Now let's assemble the frame and install the LED boards. So before I print the little thing, I'm going to use my energy monitoring smart plug to monitor the energy consumption of each print. If I print this as is, it's going to take almost 17 hours and it will use up 80 grams of filament. That's not the best way to print it since it's taking way too long to print, but I'm going to print this anyway to see how much energy it takes to print it. So it took 1.4 kilowatt hours to print this on the A1 mini. Let's see if we can reduce the printing time by deleting the scaffolding. I'm also going to flip it on this side so there's more surface contact to the plate and I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees so the little thing won't sway back and forth like this for hours. And as you can see it will take a lot less time and less material to print it without the scaffolding. I'm going to use this move plate to print this, so let's do this. The little thing didn't survive, so let's use the texture plate next. Yeah, it didn't survive this time too. So let's use this Bamboo Labs SuperTech Cool Plate, which supposedly offers better adhesion due to its sticky coating. So let's go ahead and print it using the default setting. It failed this time too, so let's increase the bed temperature to 60 degrees Celsius.
So that was a success, and look how the little thing still sticks to the plate. It took 900 watt hours to print this, so about 36% less energy. One thing though, there's warping at the edges of the little thing, which isn't all that bad since this will go in the frame anyway and you won't really see this. But let's print this again and increase the bed temperature to 65 degrees Celsius. I still see some warping around the edges, so let's print this again and increase the bed temperature to 70 degrees Celsius. It has less warping this time, so let's go all out and print this at 80 degrees Celsius. So the warping is minimal, which isn't a big deal for this little thing since it will go in the frame as I mentioned earlier. It took 1.1 kilowatt hours to print this, so in summary, compared to the original file we downloaded from Maker Lab, it took 36% less printing time and 31% less material, which isn't bad at all. But how's the quality? Let's insert that in the frame and turn the LED lights on. That looks really good, but let's compare this with the little vein generated for the older LED backlight board. In Maker Lab, you want to choose this one, then let's upload the same picture and generate the little vein. If you open the file, you can see that they also include the frame and the diffuser plate in the file. So let's choose the SuperTech plate and increase the bed temperature to 80 degrees Celsius this time too. Let's insert the diffuser plate first, then the little thing. When I compare these two, I don't see any differences between them, so I'm gonna safely assume that the only difference between these is only the size. Of course, with the newer kit, you can change the intensity of the lights. With the older one, you can either use it with the diffuser or without. Now let's go to LittleFaneMaker.com and make the LittleFane using their LittleFane generator. You want to choose flat LittleFane. Upload the picture, select crop and let's select no border. I'm going to set the resolution to 0.1 and set the size to 144 times 108. So I don't really see a lot of differences between them here, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Just a quick tip, if you're using the SuperTech plate on your X1C printer, you want to turn off plate detection. At the time of this recording, the S1C is still having trouble to recognize the plate, and once that's set, it should work normally. Now let's use the 0.4mm nozzle to print the little thing on the textured plate. It took 8 hours and 80 grams of filament to print the original file generated from Maker Lab. Let's then delete the scaffolding and print it on the SuperTech plate and increase the bed temperature to 80 degrees Celsius. So this took 38% less time and material to print. The energy consumption though, it's a bit higher using the SuperTech plate since we increased the bed temperature to 80 degrees Celsius. But of course, you can set the bed temperature to 60 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius if you don't care about slight warping at the bottom layers. So the little thing printed with the 0.2mm nozzle is a clear winner here. It has great resolution, although the little thing printed with the 0.4mm nozzle isn't that bad at all. Sure, you lose a little bit of details, but that's not a big of a deal. So let's use the tool to create color little things. It is also very straightforward. You upload your picture, and I prefer to keep the image quality as is, and then let's download that. Now if you open this in the slicer, you notice that the little thing is laying flat on the plate. If you're feeling adventurous, you can print this standing up, but it would take days and even weeks and a lot of filaments to print it, which doesn't make any sense anymore, costs and time-wise. So just print it flat, preferably on a smooth plate. Just like the mono little fan, there's no difference between the little fans generated for the LED kit and for the backlight board. The little fan printed using the 0.4mm nozzle, however, has less details, thus less richness in color, which is again to be expected. So let's use the generator on littlefanmaker.com to generate the color little fan. 
I've done a tutorial on how to do it in one of my videos, so make sure to check that out. So it really isn't easy to compare between the two, but I would say that I prefer the one from Maker Lab since I can see more colors and I can see more highlights and shadows. So I hope you find this video helpful. It doesn't cover everything and the results I shown only applies to the examples I used in the video. So if you want to share your experience with me and with the community, just drop your comments down below. This is surely an ongoing project and there were other settings that I played around with that I didn't show in this video and there are things that I want to try. So if you're interested in that, I'll post it in my blog so you can keep track of it. And as always, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you guys on the next one.